Hey everyone, it's Gavin Vengeance, and welcome back to my XP. Today, I want to talk to you guys about my experience with Final Fantasy XV, a game that uh, I've had a long, long history and a long ride with, actually. Final Fantasy XV was originally announced as Final Fantasy Versus XIII, and when I initially saw that trailer, I was blown away. I couldn't wait to play it. I was just like, wow, who is this character? Why is he so powerful? I really want to play this game. And we got a couple of other trailers after that, but we never ever really got Final Fantasy XIII Versus. So we were going on years and years without seeing anything about this game until, you know, eventually E3 rolled around one year and they were like, all right, here's a whole slew of new stuff and we're rebranding the game as Final Fantasy XV. So at that point, I was just in complete awe and in complete shock that the game that I wanted for so long was actually going to become its own mainline title. So at that point, I was just like, okay, please give me 15. This is so going to be every other Final Fantasy. Um, and I had a lot of friends that were really passionate about Final Fantasy 7. And from that point on, I was like, this is going to be the one that's better than Final Fantasy 7. This is going to be the new like crown jewel of, of Final Fantasy games. And... I was so optimistic and so positive that this game was going to be like the best thing that ever happened to the series. And, you know, we had to wait a few more years and then there was a lot of other things that were going on behind the scenes with the development team and the development of the game just kept getting pushed back and I was starting to lose hope for it and I didn't know if we were eventually going to get this game or, or what was going on with it um, until, you know, they announced that Nomura was going to be off the project and that it was, Tabata was going to be taking it over and then they were going to be like, you know, pretty much rebuilding this game from the ground up, kind of, like using some of the assets that were already in place and then I was really skeptical because a lot of the things that Nomura said I was super positive and, and really like stoked a bit and then I was like, you know, but if it keeps up at, like, at this pace, I don't know if I'm ever going to get to play this game. So when Tabata was announced to take over the project, I was like, okay, well, at least, you know, we are going to get something. And I was still trying to stay as optimistic as possible. Um, the other trailers that they released after that and technical demo showing off, like, how the magic and everything affected the world kind of, like, started to, to rekindle that fire and, and make me have a lot more drive and a lot more hype for the game. And I was positive that, you know, this was still going to become the best Final Fantasy of all time. So eventually, you know, they ended up releasing uh, the uh, episode disc guide uh, demo with Final Fantasy Type-0 HD uh, remaster for PlayStation 4. Um, so I was like, okay, I, I have to check this out. So I went out and bought uh, Type-0 solely just to get my hands on that demo. And after playing that demo and, like, you know, doing the, uh, the Deadeye quest where, you, where you're hunting the behemoth and, and seeing, like, the Ramu summon and everything, I just completely blown away again and i was just like wow this is going to be awesome this game is is definitely going to be a lot better than i was giving it credit for or or the faith that i had lost in the project that for a little bit of faith i should say that i lost in the project was just completely like slapped in the face and it was like nope this game is going to be awesome again this game really is going to be the best and then the game came out and I remember I, I was going to stream it and, and I was in between jobs and in between moving and I just didn't really get around to streaming it on, on my channel or anything. But I really got to experience that game for myself at that point without having to pay attention to anybody in chat or anything like that. It was just kind of an experience that I can honestly say was, you know, just for me. And playing through the game, I made sure that when I first played Final Fantasy 15 that I was going to complete. So absolutely every side quest, anything possible in that game that was uh, considered a collectible or, or anything like that, I made sure I got everything done in the game. So I spent well over 100 hours. Um, I think my file was like at 120 hours or something. And I made sure that I platinum the game on PlayStation 4. Uh, so I, I did absolutely everything in it. I collected everything. I did, you know, the 100th uh, uh, floor dungeon. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now. Um, but, uh, but I did absolutely everything in the game. And 
I, I just remember like being really, really engrossed in it and, and just having to play the game and experience every little thing about it. And like a lot of other people, I was initially turned off by the whole like auto driving uh, mechanic or, or gameplay element, I should say. And I, I don't know, like there was a lot of like little things that kind of turned me off a little bit from the experience initially. And at the same time, there was a lot of things that just completely wowed me. Like I really like fishing in games. And when I started fishing um, at Golden Key, I, I couldn't stop. <laughs> I, I honestly spent probably the first like three hours of the game fishing, which is a good sign in, in my opinion for for anything to do with Final Fantasy. So I, I there's like I said, there's a mix and a match of like a lot of things that I like and a lot of things that kind of rubbed me the wrong way initially. So I kind of just looked past all of it and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna. Put my nose to the grindstone. I'm just going to really do everything in this game and, and absolutely enjoy everything that it has to offer and experience it all. And I made sure that I went through everything. I, I did the story over twice. I made sure I bet every like uh, secret boss or secret dungeon or secret area, everything. Even that like horrible dungeon with... Uh, it was just like complete darkness or whatever, and you, and you couldn't see the enemies, and each floor was just like darkness. Um, I can't remember the name of that dungeon either, but yeah, the, I, did, I did everything. So, after doing all the all the hunts, everything in the game, I, I was just like, you know what? I went and finished the story of the game, and I gotta say, I got teary-eyed at the ending, and especially like the post-credits like, like scene, I was just like, you know what? This was a really great game didn't quite hit the marks or the expectations that I had for it um and and I, I was kind of let down a little bit but at the same time I was happy that we got something um there was a few other key scenes that I know should have been a little more impactful to me um and 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 it wasn't even though I I did like everything I, I mean I watched every single like uh episode of the anime I watched the Kingsglaive movie countless times. Everything. I, I was completely engrossed in the lore of the entire uh, game and, and its its entire universe. So, you know, there were uh, emotional attachments you were supposed to have for certain characters, and I didn't really feel it after, like, you know, playing through the game and, and seeing the events unfold the way that they did. Which was kind of disappointing for me because I, I felt like a lot of other things should have a lot more impact. And when certain scenes happened, I was just kind of like, oh, oh well, um, which is odd. But then, like I said, the the ending, I was just kind of teary eyed. And, you know, that that part for me was a lot more impactful. Um, and, and the game itself is going to be a lot more impactful, in my opinion, if you have like this group of friends that you normally spend your day to day, uh, you know, with and and you do things with, and, and they're really your best friends, then this game's going to be a lot more impactful to you and a lot more relatable. Um, that being said, like after I played the, the you know the base game and I did everything into it, and I was just kind of like, okay, it is what it is. I'll wait for the DLCs to come out and and I'll try those out and. Maybe it'll change my overall opinion of the game, which was still positive. Don't get me wrong, but you know, I, I just wanted more out of it. I, I felt like I, I didn't quite get everything I had waited, you know, a, a decade for. So I ended up getting uh, all of the DLC separately. I didn't buy the season pass or anything like that. I just, you know, downloaded each individual DLC. So when I first initially played episode Gladiolus, I was like, wow, the combat in this is awesome. Like, I, I loved it, but I didn't like how linear it was. <laughs> and I understood, like, you know, what it was. It was more of like a, like a dungeon, like, rush, I guess, uh, or boss rush, whatever you want to call it. But I really loved how much that added to the story because at that point in the game when he left your party i was like well what happened to him where'd he go what did he do and when you get him back in your party in the base game there are obvious like physical changes to his character 
But initially, I didn't notice it um, until I played the DLC, and then I was like, oh, okay, now I understand what they're talking about. And it was really cool to actually, like, see, you know, the main villain of, of that DLC as well, which to me is, <laughs> is awesome, because I love any kind of, like, homage to any older Final Fantasy or anything like that. Um, the throwbacks are definitely key for the fans. But it was really awesome to actually play that one, and then I ended up uh, getting episode Prompto afterwards. And Prompto, to me, initially wasn't one of my favorite characters. I've kind of found him a little bit annoying. But, yeah, I ended up playing episode Prompto, and that gave me a lot more... Uh, I don't want to say, like empathy or whatever but but I, I made they made the character a lot more relatable to me and and i understood like you know why he was the way he was a little more um after playing that dlc and i had really really like weird vibes when i initially got like the snowmobile in that uh, dlc but after i got it and i upgraded and everything and it was just completely ridiculous um i had a lot of fun just going out and messing around with it and just like jumping all over the terrain and then yeah just completely like breaking what it's intended for but i ended up doing everything in all that dlc everything in the prior dlc um i really love his interactions with uh Aranea because Aranea to me was the standout character of final fantasy 15. like her character was awesome by far one of my favorite female protagonists of all time um so it was really cool to actually like see her again into the the entire story. Loved, loved, loved that DLC for Prompto. Um, after I got that one, I ended up getting Episode Ignis. Now, Episode Ignis, I, I did enjoy, but initially I didn't really like the setting of it, I guess. I understood why it was, where it was located, because, you know, something does happen with that character in that part of the story, and again, I, I wondered, where where was he, why, what happened to him happened, and yeah, I was just, you know, it, it was fulfilling to see all of that side of the story, because you don't have that perspective in the base game. Again, makes you have a lot more empathy, or like I said, relation to that character, and I really appreciated that, uh, that DLC, but I, I guess I'm not really into the whole, like, uh, espionage kind of games, like, stuff. I don't want to say, like, it reminds me of Splinter Cell, but, it, but it, it's got certain elements of, like, a spy type, like, game or whatever, and I wasn't too fond of that. I did like how you could, uh, change the elements of his daggers and stuff, and that was really cool, but... Again, did everything in that DLC and got a little more information on that character, made it a lot more enjoyable for me, and then at that point I was like, okay, I'm starting to, to really, really enjoy the entire series, and then there was the announcement of all the additional DLCs, most of which we didn't get, <laughs> and there were some that I was really looking forward to, but we ended up getting episode Arden. And after we got Episode Arden, I played through that one, and it's one of those weird scenarios where you actually start, like, sympathizing for the villain. And after I, I, I did that and, and played through all of Arden's stuff, I was like, okay, like, this adds a whole new element to everything. And I ended up, like, watching the anime that also came out alongside of, like, you know, the Episode Arden as well. So there was a lot more, like, backstory, and you, you had a lot more uh, information as to why Arden was, you know, how he was, and why he his intentions were the way that they were in, in the, the base game. And I know I'm, like, bumbling around trying to avoid a lot of spoilery stuff, but it was nice to have more backstory for the characters that... In my opinion, I didn't really need a whole lot more backstory because I kind of read into the the lore a little bit more, like with the, you know, the the, the whole mythos of of the. I don't. I can't remember what they're called again, but anyways, the summons. So, yeah, that, I read into a lot of that, and I kind of understood like you know, parts of his backstory, but I didn't understand to the to the level that it was actually portrayed. So it was nice to see that, and it was super fun to play as Arden, because Arden's really OP. Um, 
and I, and I love anything to do with like phasing in and out of, uh, of time or space or whatever. But yeah, loved episode Arden. I wish we would have got more to the game. And in saying that, I know I did jump over the whole like alternate ending and Ignis's episode. I'll just say this that personally, I'm not a fan of it <laughs> because it kind of like takes away from the base game. And I, I thought that the base game's ending for me was very perfect. Um, and I don't think it needed to be altered. I don't think there needed to be an alternate ending. I understand why some people might have wanted that, but I think it was fine as it was. So again, I'll just say that that alternate ending I didn't really like. Um, playing the chapter 13 verse 2 uh, section as well, which initially wasn't released upon the base game. So much more like backstory, so much more information on what certain characters were doing and what happened to certain characters because when you play the initial base game and you don't realize and you're just like, okay, well, what happened to them? Why weren't they showed more? It's necessary for you to, to understand like what happens in a lot of the game. So highly recommended if you don't play all the DLCs or if you haven't played all the DLCs, play them, play chapter 13 verse 2. It'll add so much more to the overall experience of the game. Um, that said, I, I purchased the Royal Upgrade. I did everything in Comrades, completely max out my character. Comrades in itself to me is is something else. Like I had a lot of like connectivity issues with it, and I had a lot of instances where like it was really slow uh, queuing up for a mission, or where it was really hard to like pair up with with teammates that, that were actually on my friends list. So there were a lot of issues with it. Um, I'm not sure if that's fixed now or not, but yeah, I, I did everything into it. I went back for each update. I, I beat every single mission into the game, and I really enjoyed uh, Comrades. I really enjoyed, like, you know, restoring power to La Solum and, and surrounding areas, and it, it was a kind of grind-heavy at first. But now it's a little bit easier to like get into it and get the story of it done, um, especially now like where it's a standalone client as well too. I, I know they did address a lot of issues, but in saying that, like comrades to me added another little part of the story that needed to be in the base game as well. I, I, I feel like everything deserved to be in that base game. I know they were really pressed for time, but had everything been in that base game, I think it would have been a lot more solid of an experience for a lot of other people that only went into the base game and, and felt that it was really short or, or unfulfilling. So after playing Comrades, uh, the one thing I could say with that, that expansion or DLC or whatever you want to call it is that theme song uh, <laughs> is so good. Choosing Hope is it has become one of my favorite Final Fantasy tracks of all time, and it's just an amazing job by Nobu Uematsu. Fantastic, and you know what he says in the interview about like the song and how it transcends the game, and and really how it's more relative to our world, and that it's more relative to us as a race. It's it's definitely definitely worth a listen. One of my favorite tracks by far. Choosing Hope is awesome. Um, aside from that, the game as a whole, everything, all the side bosses, everything, like I said, in, in Royal Edition, to me, is nowhere near what it initially had been to me. Initially, like I said to me, it was a little disappointing, and now I keep going back to it, and I started realizing a more like strong love or bond to the game it, it's it's weird to describe but i can hear certain songs and you know my fiance will look over at me she's like, why are you crying and i'm like because this game means so much to me because this journey of, of these four bros means so much to me and it's something that i can relate to on a on you know somewhat of a personal level with my own friends and, and I guess that's why I love this game so much. It's because it really makes you think and, and it really makes you value your time that you spend with your friends, your true friends that are there by your side and they'll stick with you through any and everything, no matter what. 
Final Fantasy XV is that story for me. It really encapsulates everything that it, it just it's it's friendship. It's like I said, a brotherhood. Um, and this can also be relative to females or transgenders, anything. And as long as you form bonds with other human beings, this game is super relative to everyone. And it's meaningful. So, all in all, like after really giving this game a chance and, and really going back and remembering and reliving certain events of it and just hearing certain tracks and stuff, I'm really blown away by how much the game sunk its like roots into me, and Final Fantasy XV will probably go down as one of my favorite standalone Final Fantasies of all time, and, and that's rivaling even things like Final Fantasy VI, which is, like I said, very odd for me to say about a game that I felt so partial to. It's something that I'm definitely going to revisit multiple more times, and it's something that I'm always going to hold like close to my heart because it just reminds me of, of the bonds that I have with other people and my friends. And I'm really thankful that Tabata delivered on his promise to bring us a game that is so incredible and, and told a story that was so meaningful. I do originally like you know wish that we would have got Nomura's version of the game. Because I feel like it might it might have had like a lot more darker undertones, or uh, it might have been a little more impactful and and whatnot. Because I I feel like he had a really good ultimate plan for this game, but I'm extremely taken back and and blown away by what Tabata achieved. So in saying that, I know that Nomura had his chance and everything, and I know that we'll probably end up getting you know bits and pieces of this with the the new. Uh, Kingdom Hearts DLC that's supposed to be coming out as well, or, or the next Kingdom Hearts series, or whatever he's doing. But anywho, the whole like, God, what's the name of that game? Doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure we'll get we'll get a chance to experience that. Um, and and I'm very very thankful that Tabata did what he did with what he had to work with. So yeah, that's my experience with Final Fantasy 15, guys. Um, I, again, completely blown away. Taken back. I, I love the game. I absolutely love Final Fantasy XV. And yeah, I want to know about you guys' this experience as well down in the comments below. So please let me know. Um, let me know if anything I said here struck a chord with you. Uh, and if you guys like my content, my videos, anything at all, just give it a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys for whatever's next. <laughs> All right, take care, everyone. See you later.